So we're now looking at motion graphs for a bouncing ball. I'd like you to consider the motion of um, a, a bouncing ball and have a go at sketching a displacement against time graph for several bounces of the ball. So if you can grab a piece of paper and a, and a pen or a pencil and just have a go at sketching the displacement versus time graph for the bouncing ball. So your graph should look something like this with displacement on the y-axis and time on the x. And we've got a series of um, peaks shown there. So can you identify from the displacement time graph um, the points where the ball bounces and the highest point reached? So the bounces are shown um, here as the displacement comes back to zero. And the peaks are shown here um, as the ball uh, reaches its peak. So I'd now like you to attempt to sketch a velocity time graph below your displacement time graph. Again, just take a moment to sketch that velocity time graph on your piece of paper below your displacement time graph, considering each stage of the motion. And your graph should look like this one. Um, we know that um, we've got the ball bouncing up here and it's going to have a positive velocity. Everything up is positive and everything down is negative. And it's going to be the maximum um, positive velocity just as it comes out of the bounce. So this is just bouncing off the ground here. It's going up to its maximum um, height so that's its peak and then it's falling down um, to the point where it hits the ground again and bounces and during the bounce the bounce itself is represented by just this very short time interval here where the ball receives um, an upward force um, which changes its velocity quite rapidly from negative to positive. So the question, how could you find acceleration due to gravity G from the velocity time graph? So we'd be looking to find the gradient of the section of the graph where the ball is in flight, so not where it's um, in contact with the ground. So we're looking to find uh, the gradient of this line here not the dashed line because that's where it's in contact with the ground. Um, and But the gradients of these should be give us the same value. So we know we can find gradient from change in y over change in x. Change in y is delta v and change in y is delta t. And that would give us our value of g um, if we found that gradient. And we'd find that it's a negative gradient, which is telling us that g acts in a downwards direction. I'd now like you to try sketching the acceleration time graph below your velocity time graph. So below where you've drawn your velocity time graph, have a go at sketching the acceleration time graph for the bouncing ball, considering each stage of the motion. And the acceleration time graph should look something like this with a negative acceleration here, which is when uh, the ball is um, in flight. There's a constant negative 9.81 meters per second squared, which is our value of G. And then we get this positive spike, which is the acceleration given to the ball. Um, for a very short period of time, just as the ball bounces. So why is the acceleration a constant negative value apart from the spikes? So G is always negative because it always acts downwards and it is considered to be a constant value on the surface of the Earth um, and that is minus 9.81 metres per second squared.